we're in Clonmel, County Tipperary, and we're going to look at the railway line from Clonmel to Thurles. Uh, this is Clonmel Station. Interestingly enough, I see some semaphore signals there, which is a quaint. It's still operational. Very unusual. Still see that in this day and age on a railway line. Okay. So to take the train from Clonmel to Thurles nowadays, you would go, you'd have to go back to Limerick Junction, and then this is the main Dublin to Cork line. Thurles is on that line. So you'd have to probably change at Limerick Junction. I wouldn't imagine there'd be too many people making that journey in that direction. Uh, Clonmel is on the line from Limerick, Limerick Junction, on down to Waterford. That's probably where most of the traffic passing through here is. But uh, it used to be possible up until 1963 to take a more direct route by train from Clonmel to Thurles via Feathered. Uh, also, there was a little branch line that went down to Cashel. Talk about that maybe later on a separate video. But for now, let's follow this old line, see what's left of it, see what we can see on the satellite view. There's your line down to Waterford, and here's the where the line used to split and uh, go off to Thurles. Uh, probably not a whole lot left to see of it there at ground level because a lot of uh, modern road construction taken over but the trains used to pass through where this roundabout is now. And for the most part this route seems to be remarkably clear. Now we're going up through the fields and at this point we're looking for clues as to where the old line used to be. Very often it's just rows of hedges or different colored grass. It gives you an indication of where the line used to go. I think this is the row of hedges here. Let's follow that. See, is there anything to see here that crosses the road? Mm, not much evidence of a railway there. Let's keep going. Am I off? Am I off the path altogether? No, I think this is it. I might see something here. Sometimes you see old bridges and the abutments of old bridges. Yeah, there you go. There's an old humpback bridge. So it's, there's no river underneath. Uh, this is, looks like a bridge over nothing, but it used to be the bridge over the old railway. We're following lines of hedges up through the fields. and There's really not a whole lot of evidence of an old railway there, is there? Uh, we can just pick it up here. Yeah. So this row of hedges traces the route. And there's another crossing point here. Yeah, an old humpback bridge. I wonder if you can still walk underneath it. A lot of these bridges, sometimes they're over old cuttings, and the cuttings have been filled in and returned to agricultural use. And sometimes the farmers, uh, sometimes it was filled in underneath the bridge, but sometimes the, the bridges were left open because they're kind of handy for farmers getting from one field to another. It doesn't look like you could walk underneath this one now. Yeah, there you go. There's an old bridge still in place. It's a long time since a train passed over this little country lane. It's remarkable the amount of great separation that they used to have. And I think there's another bridge here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah there it is. So I wonder if you could still walk underneath this one. It looks a bit overgrown there on one side. And the line really disappears through these fields and then reappears again on the other side of this road. Oh, 706. Anything to see here? Yeah, there you go. There's an old... The beams are still in place. The abutments are still there. But the embankment that was on the other side seems to have been removed. Sometimes the landscape changes quite a bit in the intervening years. There's about thousands of these ruins around the country when the railways were shut down. And we're getting into Feathered here. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Feathered? 
Cannibal Bridge still in place. There's an embankment. See how part of the embankment's been removed? Cannibalized for other purposes, probably building projects. Nice to see this old ruin still in place though. A long time since a train passed over here. And the station in Fethard was about here somewhere, I think. Yeah, there's another bridge abutment. So it's been still in place on one side, removed on the other, and then there's a wall here at this. Is this a GA club? Uh, this, uh, sometimes wonder about walls like this. Where did they get the bricks from? Where did they get the stones from? When I see a bridge that's been removed from an old railway, I wonder if it's been reconstituted into these walls. That looks like a really modern looking wall though. Um, I think this, yeah, station in Fethard I think was about here. Get in close enough. I don't think we can see it from the road. Yeah, crossed over the road about here somewhere. And I found some old photos of the station in Fethard. Um, there's a, an article here, a railway tale. I'll give you this link in the description. This is an article about the, the old Thurlis Clonmel railway line. And then also I'll give you links to this. This is the, yeah, there's the station. This is the excellent air trains website by Kieran Cooney. So there's Fethard Station. The signal cabin is partly, I mean, the bottom half has been removed, but the, the top half happily has been retained. So the old levers are long gone. It's probably used at this. Summer house now or something. And then there's the, what's left of the old platforms. So it's very peaceful and quiet now, but we used to have steam trains running through it. There's the old engine shed or goods shed or something. Cool little website. So you're welcome to look at that. I'll give you a link in the description. I think that's the station building we're looking at there, but we can't really see it from the road. Okay, let's keep following the hedges. See what we can see. The crossing points are usually quite interesting. Yeah, this one's done in the Kilkenny colours. So I wonder if there was a cutting underneath here that's been filled in since. That looks like an old bridge. It's been filled in underneath. And again, see that discoloration in the field? The grass is just slightly different. So that when the Cutting was filled in, it must have been a slightly different type of soil or whatever that was put in. It still gives away a little bit of a clue that's still visible on the satellite view that a railway used to be here. Here's an interesting road here, it takes a bit of a detour, look at that. It goes in a, they didn't want to send the road through this, uh, I wonder what the geology was like underneath there, it must have been really hard to dig through, it must have been easier for them to just detour the road around here and build this bridge. Which now has nothing on top of it. It's probably all overgrown. But there's your old bridge. Very low clearance there too, isn't it? You wouldn't drive many buses under that. It doesn't look like you'd get many cars underneath it either, or even a jeep. Have to lower the road. It's quite interesting. Now we're getting up into some boggy country here. I think this road might have been built on top of the line. The line continued out into the fields. Just about see the outline of it, and we're getting into this Ferrano. What is this station here? There's a station here. Is it Ferranoline? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Ferranoline. I'm not from the area. It's a long time since I passed through as well, but. Never spent a whole lot of time down here. But look at that, there's the old station, beautifully preserved. It looks like a private residence now. So there's where the platforms were, still are. Some sleepers have been retained there, just to emphasize the point that this used to be a train station. And look at the shed, right up against the platform edge, which is interesting. I don't see that very often. But you can tell how old this is by the, oops. You can tell how old this is by the shape of this window, the arch on top. It's a very old construction method there. And this detail work on the gables. So make a mental note of this station layout. You've got the nice building on the right, you've got the goods shed or something here on the left, right up against the platform. That becomes important later. 
let's keep following our hedges up through the fields and we're getting in the there's a quarry up here isn't there yeah there's an old grid crossing you can probably still hack your way through and walk underneath this bridge here some random stuff dumped stored beside it there's your quarry and we're following the fields and where are we getting to here station up here somewhere so this old lane here I think was the old railway line and on the other side of the road there's not much evidence of a railway a very old structure here in a state of dilapidation I don't see any evidence of grade separation I don't see any cuttings or any bridges or anything so I'd imagine this might have been a level crossing and this building here could have been a crossing keepers cottage I see a lot of that on the old railways up north Someone's built the uh, access lane to there. That looks like a farm. It's been put on top of uh, the access lane has been built on top of the old line. <clears throat> Let's keep following our hedges up through the fields. So that disappears in some places, reappears in others. Sometimes you see two rows of hedges beside each other. The only visible clue that a train ever passed through. It's an industrial facility here. Yeah, this looks like a grid separation, so the trains would have passed underneath the road at this point. Keep on up through what is now this quarry. And there's our line. There it is. Is this where the station is here at Farmaline? Yeah, there it is. So do you remember? Remember the old layout of that station, uh, that last station that we looked at? What is this station called here? Let's look at my historic map. Turanoline, Laffins Bridge. I think this is Laffins Bridge. Yeah. So there's the same layout again. Same station built in a, the identical style, but in a completely different state of repair. Do you see that? So you've got your goods shed right up against the platform edge. And you got the nice station building on the right with all this nice detailing here on the gable. Identical layout, identical style. Very common on the north and uh, the Great Northern Railway. When I've looked at all the different stations, I see the same style of building being recycled over and over again. They just use the same architectural drawings. All very efficient. And uh, no bad thing because the station buildings were quite nice in those days, the style they built. This was a nice looking building in its day. And there used to be a humpback bridge here over the road. There used to be great separation here, but that bridge has since been removed. And that station building has seen better days, and it's probably not going to last much longer. This picture was taken in 2019. So I couldn't see these buildings lasting much longer unless someone pours a bit of money into them and uses them as Airbnbs or something, holiday homes. All right, let's press on. Are there any more stations? I think there's one more station to go. Uh, this is pretty common as well on disused railways. You see farmers repurposing the old line as a, an access road for their fields. Uh, we're getting into Borden Amona country here. Let's just go back to the, the map here. So this is the historic map. If we switch off the historic layer, these are the modern railways. And you see these red lines here. I think these are narrow gauge Borden Amona tracks. So these are used for hauling turf in and out of the bogs. So that's where we're getting into here. In the boggy country. But there's the old main line from uh, from Clonmel to Thurvis. Still visible. Horse and jockey. Derry enough on Greenway that says. So this is a trails as you'd call them in the United States. These are bicycle routes. Is that it? Is that your greenway? Hmm. Oh, I missed it. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, there is a movement. Uh, some campaigners want the old disused railways to be opened as greenways, which is bicycle routes, high quality segregated bike routes. 
that's one way to use the use the land. Not much evidence of a railway crossing here. I believe this is where the trains used to pass through, but it seems to have changed quite a bit since then. So I'm not sure if there was a level crossing here or, or if this was uh, grade separated. It's a bit hard to tell from this. I'm not sure which way I'm facing. Uh, this road, I think, was partly built on top of the old line, and they were getting into Horse and Jockey here, the village of Horse and Jockey. So again, there was a humpback bridge here that has been removed. And the station is in behind those hedges there. We can't really see it. And by all accounts, the station buildings are still intact. Yeah, there it is. So that's what it looked like. Very similar in style to the last two stations that we looked at, isn't it? Same style of building. And by all accounts, buildings are still there. Probably a private residence now. So I'll give you a link to this little blog post here. There's not much information on it, but I'll send you that way anyway. And I think there's no more stations now all the way up to Thurlis, but we'll check out the crossing points as well, just to see. Yeah, there's another grade separated one. Humpback bridge over the old railway. It's a bridge over nothing now. But uh, 50 years ago, you would have had a big pile of soot and steam blowing up from below. And there's another. If you can still walk underneath this bridge, or has it been filled in? There's the discoloured soil, there's a farmer's access lane. Crossing point here, anything to see? Yep. Yeah. Old humpback bridge. Looks like you can still get underneath it too. See the slight difference in the colour of the grass. That's the only visit, and this bridge is the only visible clue that there used to be a railway here. I keep following my hedges. There's another one. Looks like we can still get underneath that one. And on up to Thurlis we go. There's a few more crossing points here. Nothing major to see here, I think. Oh yeah, here's one. This is quite interesting. Look at that. So the train, the road, this road, this road, it used to be over the top of this bridge here. So the trains used to come through these arches. Different times. And there's the, yeah, there's the line from Limerick Junction up to Thurlis, still in service today. So as you can see, not a whole lot has been built on top of that line. So would it be feasible to get that line reopened? Yeah, probably physically possible. I'm just not sure about the there's still a station. I'm not sure about the viability of it because of the small population of these places we're passing through. Because we're going through a place like uh, a place like um, like Feather, their population is something like fourteen hundred. Whereas Cashel population is four and a half thousand plus all the visitors that it gets because it's a big tourist destination. So if we're going to get any lines reopened, I don't know if reopening the branch to Cashel and then reopening this uh, old line through Feathered would be the way to do it. It might be better just to open a direct route from, from Clonmel to Thurlis via Cashel, start off a brand new line, but that would be more expensive because if you recycle the old route, a lot of the old cuttings and the old embankments are still in place, so there's a lot less earthworks movement uh, work to do. So opening up a brand new line on a new route is more expensive than reopening an existing one, but in the long term, that you know, it might be more viable to um, get a line open through Cashel. And then the other question is, how far down the list of priorities is this? You know, there are other glaring emissions in the Irish Railway network too, like for example. Switch off um, stations there. Yeah, I mean, if you're going from Cork to Limerick, for example, you have to take this big detour up to Limerick Junction. Whereas in the old days, there was a line much more direct. So maybe getting that reopened might be a higher priority. But uh, Cashel is a big tourist destination, and Clonmel, it would be nice if you could you know, take a train from Clonmel via Cashel to Thurlis on up to Dublin and make the place a bit more better connected. The rest of the country. That 
would be my recommendation for getting Clonmel uh, better connected to the railway network. So there are lots of possibilities there, lots to think about. And as for the existing, uh, the old line via Fethard, maybe a greenway would be a better use of that route for bicycle uh, transport and leisure use. Who knows? A lot of possibilities there.